Unfortunately, we have a quiz tomorrow, right? We have to, we have to move on, right? It's been really weird with the four-day weeks. So um, we covered two sections, 2.4, I mean 2.5 and 2.6. 2.5 was with absolute values and uh, solving absolute value equations. Half of the quiz is on this. So you could consider this worksheet, WSQR uh, worksheet quiz review of this section 2.5. So half of the quiz is almost going to be exactly as what you see here, but not exactly. It's going to be similar. In other words, numbers actually change from this worksheet compared to the actual ones on the quiz tomorrow. If you want the exact questions, you could go to the old worksheets that we've already had for homework. I want to cut and paste straight from there. So I think it was WSP 2.5. That's where I want to cut and paste from. So this is good practice, but if you want to try to find the actual questions uh, that we'll see that you'll, you're going to see on the quiz tomorrow, it's from the other older worksheets. Anyways, um, I already made a video explaining the odd ones. Let's make a video explaining the even ones. So follow along with me on the even ones, and you should practice with the odd ones. And you could always see the video if you need help getting those odd ones. So number two it has A, B, and C. And A, B, and C, you could see them right there. A is 2, B is negative 4, C is negative 5. The best way to do this is to rewrite it exactly the way it is. But instead of the A, B, and the C, you plug in the values that they give you. A is 2, B is negative 4, C is negative 5. So we have absolute values. And in case you forgot, absolute values are like parentheses. You zoom in and do whatever math you can inside those parentheses. 2 plus negative 4, that is negative 2. So we have a negative 2, and it's still inside of the absolute values. Now, out here, we have a minus minus flat, five, <laughs> can't speak, minus minus 5, which changes to plus plus. So just keep that in mind that it's really a plus 5 out here, not a minus 5. OK, so we now can do the absolute value of negative 2. What's the absolute value of negative 2? 2. And then bring down the plus 5. 2 plus 5 is 7. We're done. That is the answer to number 2. That's a, a very similar type of question that will pop out on the quiz tomorrow. Let's move on to the next even question, number 4. Now, these are not dealing with A, B, and C. They're dealing with X, Y's, and Z's. So let me do this. Voila. There we go. That's nice. So again, let's replace our x, y, and z values with those numbers that they give us. Let's rewrite it exactly the way it is, but leave blank spots where you have the y, the z, and the x. Okay. So the y value is 3, so we're going to put a 3 right there. So we're going to put a 3 right here. Now, if you don't put parentheses or a dot, you might make the mistake of thinking that that's the number 33, but it's not 33. It's really negative 3 times 3, OK? So make sure you put that dot or put it in parentheses, whatever you prefer. The z value is, uh, the z value is negative 2. So I'm going to put the negative 2 right here. There it is. And the uh, x value is negative 6. So I'm going to put the negative 6 right there, negative 6. Again, the minus minus must change to a plus plus where that 6 was at. And again, with the absolute value, you zoom in and you do uh, whatever math possible inside the absolute value. So inside the absolute value, we have a negative 3 times 3. That's negative 9. We have a plus negative 2. Or you could just put minus 2. So you have the absolute value of negative 9 plus a negative 2. That is a negative 11 inside the absolute values. <coughs> So uh, we need to bring down that plus 6. This plus plus 6, just bring it down. So what we have here is the absolute value of negative 11. What's the absolute value of negative 11? 11. And 11 plus 6? 17. So this is your final answer for number 4. OK, so we practiced with 2 and 4. You guys could go back and practice with 1 and 3. And you could check your answers either on the uh, back of the classroom, posted on the wall, or on Edmodo. It's already posted there. Let's jump to the next even question, number six. Now, we're solving absolute value equations. And I hope we remember that to solve any absolute value equation, you need two situations. What are the two situations? That's right, the positive situation and the negative situation. Do we remember how to write the positive situation? How do we do it? 
Just the same thing with no lines, right? So you have the k minus 5 equals 3. Same exact thing without the absolute value lines. Now, the negative situation, it's the same exact thing. It's still k minus 5 equals. The only thing you do for a negative situation is change the sign of the right side. Okay? So that's it. That's how you set it up. And it's two simple problems. So on the positive situation, let's get k by itself by adding 5. And what you do to one side, you must do to the other. You will have k equals 8. And that is one answer right there. On the other side, again, plus 5, plus 5, because, but now it's not a positive 3, it's a negative 3, so it's not the same answer, 8. You're actually going to get, um, this cancels, k equals 2. And those are your two answers for number 6. If you wanted to, to double check your answer, you just take that k value of 8, put it right there, and see if it gives you a true statement. 8 take away 5 is 3, absolute value of 3 is 3. Plug in a 2 right there. 2 take away 5 is negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is also 3. So you could double check and make sure that you have the right answers. Let's go to the next even one, number 8. Again, let's set up the positive situation and the negative. And once again, the positive situation is writing it exactly the way it is without the absolute value lines. So we have 5 minus 2r equals 7. Just write it exactly the way it is without the lines. The negative situation, same thing, 5 minus 2r equals, but instead of a regular 7, we're going to change that sign to make it a negative 7. That's the only difference between the positive and the negative situation. All right, so let's solve this positive situation. Let's, uh, okay, now let's get r by itself on the right side of this equal sign. Now, Here's R. That's what's important. That's the movie star, right? This is like the movie star's buddy. This is the bum at the corner. Which one do you get rid of first? The bum, right? So let's get rid of that guy. Minus 5, minus 5. We end up with negative 2R equals 2. Now we need to understand, realize that what this says is negative 2 times R equals 2. So I need to get rid of the multiplication of negative 2. To get rid of multiplication, you do the opposite, which is division of that same number, negative 2. So that'll cancel it out. And what you do to one side, you must do to the other side to maintain the balance, to maintain equality. So you have r equals negative 1. And that's your answer for the positive situation. Let's go for the uh, negative situation. We're going to subtract 5. Subtract 5. 5 take away 5 is 0. That's why we're able to cancel it. Negative 2r equals negative 7 minus 5 is minus 12. So I really have negative 2 times r equals negative 12. You could even do this logically. If you, if you have uh, negative 2 times what number will give you negative 12? The answer is going to be 6. But of course, I want you to show your work. How do you get rid of a multiplication of negative 2? You divide by negative 2. Now, you do to one side, you do to the other side. Divide by negative 2. So yes, your answer will be r equals positive 6. A negative divided by a negative equals a positive. So those are your two answers. And again, it doesn't just because you're doing the positive situation doesn't mean you get a positive answer. right? We've got a negative answer right here. Just because you're doing a negative situation doesn't mean you're going to get a negative answer. We've got a positive answer right there. So are we cool with absolute value equations? I hope so. And of course, you guys could practice with these easier ones, 5 and 7. Uh, now, the last two questions on this first half of the quiz will be where I give you answers on a number line, and you have to, um, you have to write the absolute value equation that gives you those answers. Now, we have it written on the board right there, the, the notes, where you have the absolute value of x minus something equals something. And inside the absolute value, we have midpoint. And outside, we have the distance from point to midpoint. Those are your notes that we have on the board right here on the side. These are the, bo the, the notes that you need for these last two questions on this first half of the quiz. So let's set this up. We have the absolute value of x minus the midpoint. Now, it's going to equal the distance from the point to the midpoint. So first of all, what is the midpoint? What do I put right here? 
on, on this number 10. Remember doing the even ones on this worksheet. What's the midpoint? Negative. Negative three is the midpoint, right? What does midpoint mean? It means that it's a point in the middle of these guys. So if you have these points and you go one in, two in, three in, four in, you'll get to that midpoint negative three. So this is, I'm just gonna label it. That's the midpoint right there. So I'm gonna put negative three right there. And now out here on our answer, we want the distance from the point to the midpoint. And if you count, one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter if you go from this point or this point, it's gonna be the same distance if you're counting towards the midpoint. One, two, three, four. So the distance from the point to the midpoint is four. And that's your answer. The only other thing that you could do to make this look nicer is to change that minus minus to a plus plus. So what we have here is the absolute value of x plus three equals four. This is the absolute value equation that will give you the two answers, negative seven and positive one, okay? So that's the first half of the quiz. Let's jump to the other worksheet. We're gonna do a review of WSQR uh, 2.6. So the second half of the quiz tomorrow is gonna be dealing with cross multiply, sasas, yes. So uh, let's look at the even ones. Again, the odd ones are recorded already on a separate video. So if you want the explanation of the odd ones, just watch the other video. Um, cross multiply, how does it work? You take this number, you multiply it by this value, and then you take this one and multiply it by that one, and the equal sign just comes down in between the two multiplications. So I'm going to write 28 um, times W equals uh, 49 times 8. And I don't know what 49 times 8 is. Maybe if I think about it long enough. Say again? 3... 92. All right, 392. I'm going to trust you. Use the calculator, right? Okay, so we have 28W equals 392. And what's our final step here when we want to solve this thing? Divide, divide by 28. So it's going to cancel out, divide by 28, and we will have, I, I have no idea. You guys tell me, 14, right? W equals 14. Of course, use the calculator, right? Let's jump to number uh, four. This one's easier, way easier. So how do we set this up? We're gonna say three times seven, equal sign comes down, a times one. Man, that's ridiculously easy because three times seven is 21 and a times one is just a. And that's your answer. 21 equals a, a equals 21. So I would write it like this though, a equals 21, instead of 21 equals a, even though it's the same thing. Jumping to number six. What's the difference between the ones we just did at number six? That on number six, we actually have a binomial on a fraction. A binomial on a fraction. And what must we do before cross multiplying when you have a binomial? You're gonna have to distribute, so that means you have to put it in parentheses. So notice right here, it's just the 10, right here, it's just the two, right here, it's just the four, right here, you have the M minus one. When you have two things, either on the numerator or the denominator, if you have two things up there, you have to put in parentheses, because that's the only way you're going to remember to distribute. So let's uh, cross multiply. We're going to say the binomial M minus one times this guy times four, but the four, I'm going to put it out here in the front since we're used to distributing this way, right? And then the equal sign comes down. And I'm going to rewrite this, uh, or I'm going to now cross multiply the other way, 10 times 2. 10 times 2. Oh, man, I'm realizing that I could have made this question a lot easier. Well, not a lot easier, but somewhat easier. Uh, I'll explain that option in a little while. Anyways, right now when we distribute, you'll have 4m minus 4 equals 20. And then you get rid of that minus 4 by adding 4 to both sides. And then you'll have 4m equals 24. And the final step would be to divide by 4. And we'll get m equals 6. Now, there could have been an easier way of doing this problem. Let me just show you. Um, let me rewrite it. You see, in math, whenever you have a fraction that could be reduced, if you reduce it, it makes it a little easier for you. So 2 fourths reduces down to 1 half. 
you reduce two by two, that's one. Reduce four by two, that's, um, that's two. So two fourths really becomes one half. So you will be able to cross multiply with the two instead of the four. So it's a little easier. Two times m minus one equals uh, 10 times one, which is just 10. So when you distribute, you'll get two m minus two equals 10. And then you could add two, add two. You'll get 2m equals 12. Divide by two on both sides. And you'll get the same answer, m equals six. So it's up to you. Whenever you see a fraction that could be reduced, you could actually make work a little easier for you. Um, that will happen on number five. When you do that, you could reduce the 3 twelfths to 1 fourth. You don't have to, though. You could get the same answer, even if you don't reduce. Let's look at the last two questions. Last two questions are, are solving uh, equations, multi-step equations with variables on both sides, and they do have fractions in them. So on number eight, what would be smart to do to solve this thing? Okay, we could add 15 to move it to one side. Sure, why not? That's actually a good idea. Let's rewrite what we have. One half x equals five minus three-fourths x. Okay, now the problem is I have x's on both sides. And not only that, I have fractions. How could I get rid of fractions? Hmm? If you want to get rid of a fraction, the, the beauty about an equation, you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides of the equation, right, to the entire equation. So how do you get rid of any fraction? Multiply by the denominator. Remember, a fraction, this is really saying 1 divided by 2. If you don't want this divided by 2, multiply by 2 and it'll get rid of it. Right? You do the opposite to, to get rid of it, the inverse operation. Now, the question is, do we just want to get rid of this fraction, or do we want to get rid of both fractions at the same time? If you want to go for both at the same time, what would we multiply everything by? By 4, right? The 2, the 4, go with the bigger one, 4. That is the LCD of both denominators there. So multiply by 4, multiply by 4, multiply by 4. Multiply everything by 4. So 4 on top divided by 2 on the bottom, that's going to be 2, right? It's like saying 2 divided by 2 is 1, 4 <coughs> divided by 2 is 2. So what do we have left? We have 2 up on top times 1x. 2 times 1x is 2x. Equals 4 times 5 is 20. And over here, the 4 and the 4 cancel out. So what I have left is negative 3x. So now I have an equation that has variables on both sides that has no more fractions. I need to get x by itself on one side. So what do I get rid of? The minus 3x by doing plus 3x. What I do to one side, I do to the other side. <coughs> I now have 5x equals 20. Divide by 5, divide by 5, x equals 4. <coughs> and that's it. So ladies and gentlemen, we have reviewed the entire quiz for tomorrow. You guys need to practice some more. You have all the odd ones to do. The answers are posted on the wall. They also, will, I also will upload a video to Edmodo that has the even ones explained if you want to go over those. Wait a minute. Th these are the even ones. I have the odd ones uploaded if you want to check those out because these are the even ones already. Whatever.